Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to figure out how to find the final velocity of an object, which is thrown off a building in a horizontal direction at some velocity, 20 meters per second in the x direction. What we're trying to do here is find the final velocity when it lands. Now here, the difficulty is that it's a vector quantity and that it has both an x and a y component. That means that we need to find the final x component when it lands v final in the x direction and we need to find v final in the y direction. Then it turns out to find v final, the magnitude of v final, all we have to do here is say v final is equal to the square root of v final in the x direction squared plus v final in the y direction squared. So we use Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the diagonal line, which is a hypotenuse, of course, of a right triangle. The next thing we would like to do also is find the angle relative typically to the horizontal, theta. And theta can be found by taking the arc tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side of that angle. And in this case, that would be equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side, which would be the y component v final in the y direction divided by the adjacent side which is v final in the x direction. Thus means that if we're trying to find the final velocity of a projectile when it lands, we need to find the x and the y components, use Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the final velocity, and we use the arc tangent to find the direction relative to the horizontal. Let's go ahead and now find the x and y components. First of all, the x component is easy. It turns out, whenever the initial velocity is in the x direction, once a projectile is in the air, that will never change because there are no forces acting on that object while it's flying through the air in the x direction. The y direction, yes, that's due to gravity, that will change its velocity in the y direction, but there will be no change in the velocity in the x direction because there's no forces involved, and we're also ignoring any wind resistance. Therefore, we can say, that the velocity final in the x direction equals the velocity initial in the x direction, which in this case is equal to 20 meters per second. So that makes it easy. Now for the velocity in the y direction. We can do that in two ways. We can first assume that we're going to find the time in the air, which depends on the vertical component, and then use that time to find the velocity in the y direction. So let's do that. Time in the air. We use the equation y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half, that would be gt squared. Plugging in the numbers, final height zero, initial height 50 meters, initial velocity in the y direction. Well, if it's thrown horizontally out, there'll be zero velocity in the y direction, and then minus a half a g, which is a minus 4.9 t squared. Solving that for t, we get 4.9 t squared is equal to 50, or t is equal to the square root of 50 divided by 4.9. With a calculator, let's find out what that is equal to. 50 divided by 4.9, take the square root, and we get 3.19 seconds. If we now use the third equation over here, we can use v sub y v in the y direction, the final v sub y is equal to v initial in the y direction plus g times t, now that we know the time. Remember, g is a minus 9.8 meters per second. So this is equal to 0 minus 9.8 times 3.19. And so vy is equal to times 9.8 equals minus 31.3 meters per second. You can also solve this without finding the time in the air. We can use our second equation here, and we can say that v squared, so no time. We can say that vy squared equals vy initial squared, the initial velocity squared, plus 2g times delta y. That's the change in height. The final velocity then, vy, is going to be equal to the square root of the initial velocity in the y direction squared. Again, the initial velocity is 0, plus 2 times a minus 9.8 times a minus 50. 
And you say, well, why are you minus 50? Well, because the change is from 50 to 0. So that's a negative change in the height, therefore a minus 50. That gives us 100 times 9.8 is 980. So the square root of 980 is indeed the same, V sub y. And of course, I should put down plus or minus, because in this case, what makes sense, since it's coming down, V sub y is going to be a minus 31.3 meters per second. You can see that you can find it both ways, finding time in the air or simply using that equation. Finally, we're going to find V final. V final is equal to the square root of V final in the x direction squared plus V final in the y direction squared. This is equal to the square root of 20 squared plus a minus 31.3 squared. Now here we're going to end up with a positive quantity. Why? because we're simply finding the magnitude of that final velocity. We can't really say that it's going in a negative direction because it's not going straight down, it's not going to the left, it's going at an angle. So with vectors, we're going to express it in terms of the magnitude and the direction, direction in terms of the angle. So in this case, we'll take the squared plus 400, take the square root, we end up with 37.1 meters per second. Notice it's going to be positive quantity because it's the magnitude of the final uh, velocity. And then to find the angle, the angle theta is equal to the arctangent of v final in the y direction. Again, we want the magnitude, 31.3, divided by the final velocity in the x direction, 20. So 31.3 divided by 20, take the inverse tangent of that, we get 57 degrees. So that means that the final velocity is 37.1 meters per second and that the direction is 57 degrees below the horizontal. And that's how we find the final velocity in projectile motion.